I talk a little Tennessee. We really didn't, you know, this <coughs> game, the anticipation of this has been lingering for quite some time. I'd put it around five years, uh, but really haven't talked, uh, uh, you know, as far as uh, just the actual game itself. So <coughs> we will uh, talk about that as far as what we see in our opponent and all that. Obviously, a, a storied program. Won national championship and SEC championships. Uh, we understand uh, that there, it's a historic program. Uh, got a lot of respect for uh, for Phil Fulmer, uh, you know, and I know he's back in the mix of things there as their athletic director, um, you know, and and, uh, and has followed Jeremy Pruitt's uh, coaching career for quite some time. Uh, you know, has worked himself up the ranks. I admire that. I. Um, you know, uh, have a soft spot and in, in, in <clears throat> for what I think of, of, of coaches, guys that, you know, uh, kind of work their way up in the high school ranks and college ranks and all that. And he's, he's accomplished a whole lot of stuff. So a lot of respect for, for him and what, what he's done. Um, you know, when you look at what we think they're going to do, I mean, we can sit here and guess all we want. Uh, you know, the truth of the matter is, is we really don't know. Uh, what 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 they're going to do? We've watched, you know, we we we're aware of all their coaches, where they've been. We we've accumulated video on on everything. We've watched their spring game, which um, really probably doesn't mean a whole lot. Um, you know, watch some of their games from last year uh, to see what their personnel is like, and they're big and fast and strong, and I imagine they're a little bit more motivated to play. Uh, for a new coaching staff than than they were towards the end of last year, so uh, a lot of, a lot of unknowns, you know, and, and you know we're expecting them to be very multiple on on offense. Don't know which quarterback they're going to go with. <laughs> they're, what they ask them to do, I would imagine, is going to be pretty similar. Whether it's um, you know whether it's uh, number two, the guy that they had last year, or or the transfer from Stanford, so. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll look at that and kind of figure it out. They're going to have three or four backs that they're going to want to hand the ball to a lot, a lot of tight ends, full backs, uh, big experienced offensive line guys that have a lot of, uh, a lot of playing time with them. And then uh, what, what I look, their receiving core looks, looks awful good to me um, as far as what their stature is, their, uh, their production level is good. The Callaway's a really good guy, a really good kid, uh, 6'2", 200, made a bunch of plays for him last year. Uh, the Jennings kid looks good as well. You know, was hurt most of last year, but two years ago uh, was incredibly productive. So, um, you know, they 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 got they got dudes on offense, and uh, you know, uh, it, it's it's uh, it's going to be a challenge. I, I I'm glad we have such great continuity on defense with our coaching staff uh, to be able to, to adjust to what they do. You know, good coaches make adjustments quick in game ones. <laughs> uh, you know, and we're going to have to kind of get a feel for what they're doing and communicate it with our coaching staff and, and make adjustments on top of that. Uh, defensively, uh, a little more, a little more clear cut as far as as, as what they're going to do. Obviously, uh, Jeremy's been DC at some pretty special places over the last five years, uh, going back with what they did at Florida State. You know, a couple years at Georgia. And, and then the last couple of years at, at Alabama, I've been watching a lot of Alabama video, um, you know, in addition to those other places as well. Um, so, you know, that's all we can go on. You know, went back and looked at their personnel from last year and, you know, especially their front is where they got a lot of guys coming back. Um, and they all look good. You know, they got a bunch of big kids inside that can, that, that, that can hold gaps and Edge guys that all look like they're six five and two fifty and and can pin their ears and come up field. Uh, experienced linebacking core, experienced safety core. Uh, you know they got some some moving parts at corner, uh, but uh, you know once again, uh, you know what are they going to do? Um, you know there's there's always questions with that. So we will uh, we will we will got confidence in, in Jake and Coach Wick. To, uh, uh, communicate early on as far as what they're seeing from a front perspective and a coverage perspective, and and make adjustments on top of that. Special teams, another another deal where it's moving parts. Um, you, you know, Coach Pruitt's obviously probably going to have a hand in that as well. But bringing in uh, Charles Kelly from Florida State, who took over for him as his defensive coordinator at Florida State for the last four years, 
was their special teams guy in 2013 when they won their national championship. So, um, you know, been back looking at that. I, I have a hard time looking at video from six years ago, but uh, we've done our due diligence with that, and and uh, we'll 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 try to figure out early on with with what they're going to do. So, uh, it's always game one, and you know this this more than others in in recent past as far as how how we. Uh, how, we, how quick can we make adjustments with what, what they do? Um, you know, they're going to have to probably make a few adjustments with what we do as well. That's just what game ones are about. Take a few questions. Dan, in game one with a new staff, as you were saying, you had to be careful not to overload the kids with every variable that could be out there? Yeah, there's only so much time in the day. We've been, we've been restricted to four hours a day and 20 hours a week for the last two and a half weeks. So that's not a whole lot of time. Um, <clears throat> but we have. We've, we've shown them some stuff. We've, as a coaching staff, we've probably prepared for this one more than I have in recent, recent memory. Um, it, how, much you, how much you try to, you know, you can't prepare for everything. So, you know, game one's always about, you know, let's worry about us as much as we possibly can, and then we need to communicate on the sidelines early in the games as far as what, what their plan of attack is. The way that you're using your analysts, did you have them just break down film and like give you totals, or did you actually want them trying to draw some <clears throat> conclusions and say, "Hey, here's what we think"? Yeah, it's the same thing, really. Uh, <clears throat> you know, just do all the research and you know put all the stuff on these these scouting reports that we got, and um, you know we've we've had a lot of time as coaching staff to to take that information and digest it for game one. Where those guys, in my opinion, are really going to make a big difference is, 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 is two things. One, getting us on to the next game quickly. Uh, you know, so that will really kick in Sunday. You know, when we're here Sunday, we, we'll watch our game from Saturday. We will, you know, meet. And then we got to quickly flip the switch and move on to the next one. So <clears throat> where in years past, I'd – I'd be up here until midnight watching previous videos, trying to figure out which ones we're going to break down. I mean, all that stuff's already going to be done. So, uh, and then and then the self scouting aspect of it as well. You know, they'll keep a tally on uh, what we're doing offensively and what we're doing defensively, and <clears throat> and the kicking game as as well, and and try to try to figure out what our tendencies are before it's too late, so to so to speak. So. Game one, you know, coaches get bored and, and you know, do stuff all summer. Uh, but moving forward, uh, quick turnarounds are where it's probably a little more important. And how much importance uh, should be placed on winning the first game? I mean, obviously. obviously I would, would prefer to, to lose it, Bob. What does it have to do with the whole season? <laughs> I mean, it's. I mean, I, I don't even think that way, honestly. I mean, it's just every – and you can say, well, this one's a big game. Well, they're all big games. I mean, and I know from a media perspective and probably from a fan base perspective, some are more important than the others. But it's not how, it's not how you approach it <clears throat> with, when, when it's your job and when it's your livelihood. And, you know, it, every game's important. And it, you, you need to try to win – every one of them, regardless of the magnitude of it, where it's at, who it's against. I mean, I just really honestly can't comment on that based on the fact it doesn't, it doesn't register very much. <clears throat> Do you have a lot of familiarity with their players through recruiting? Not, not a ton, some. <laughs> you know, I've probably, I think we looked at their roster and there's about 10, you know, that we actively recruited. You know, you can say, well, it, it looks – some of you recruiting guys that are in here can say, well, according to my, 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 my notes, you guys offered 60% of their players. Well, they probably offered 60% of our players too, but only recruited two of them. Offering them and recruiting them are two different things. But there's – we tried we, – we actively recruited, I think, about 10 of them. About the same as Virginia Tech last year for, for – Whatever reason that is. And what's your final assessment of the defense heading into the season? Oh, <clears throat> I don't know. Um, 
I mean, I like where they're at. I mean, you got to you got to play that first game before you come up with any determining factors whatsoever. Um, you know, I like. I think we got some. I think we got good leadership. You know, David Long and Drayvon Henry um, have, have, have are strong leaders. Um, you know, and then we got some older guys <coughs> that we've inserted in with grad transfers and junior college guys that bring some maturity as well. Um, I, I I think we're a tighter defense. You know, um, you know, Gibby likes coaching these guys a lot. Um, that gives you a chance to be successful, and now you gotta you gotta line up and and play good and and stay healthy and and uh, continue to improve as well. So, you know, I like where we're at right now. Uh, I, I'm just as anxious as anybody else to go out there and see us play live. So, we'll get a chance to do that here in about five days. Grad transfers for the defensive line. Obviously, you, you found two better than you thought you would get. Worse. <coughs> How have they worked out compared to what your expectations were? Good. Yeah, they're both listed as starters right now. I think that kind of answers that question, right? So uh, I, what I like about those two guys, and again, I got it. I haven't seen neither either one of those two kids play in a game. So, you know, I, I, I've got an opinion that I've reserved the right to change it once I see them this Saturday. Um, but what I like about those guys is just they're, 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 they're happy kids. They... They're great teammates. They run around the building and they like people and talk to people and they, uh, you know, they're mentoring younger kids, uh, you know, and, and they're showing, they're, they're, they're leading them the right way, you know, so all that's very positive. Uh, it's made us better on defense. Um, you know, I, I, they've both played in big games, so I think they're both going to play their tail off. Uh, can't wait to watch it on Saturday. Any recruiting pop from Deanna Carolina? I know you got a couple of hits from there, and there's occasionally guys you go after there. Ah, uh, you know, I a little bit. You know, we're it's 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 uh, it's a regret that I have. I didn't do it earlier. You know, we we've been in in North Carolina. We've got North Carolina guys, but we haven't really focused on North Carolina. Um, it was probably a little bit of an oversight on my 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 aspect of it there's only so many places you can go <clears throat> you know and and we're in, in a unique recruiting area to where we've got to go a lot of places but uh, you know we've moved into in into there you know jake's recruiting it bruce tall is recruiting it we we're, we have presence um typically when you when you it typically takes a few years you know i i see I see our recruiting presence in Georgia. One, Doug Belk's doing a good job. But you're recruiting guys right now to play in that, that opener against Florida State, which is, what, two years from now? Two or three, something like that. But you're recruiting guys now to play in that game. So that's one of, the, uh, one of my regrets, which obviously everybody has regrets on everything. But uh, if, if we could have sold this game to Charlotte kids three years ago, it probably would have made a little bit bigger impact. With that said, you know, there's there's a lot of interest in West Virginia. Um, I, I'm thrilled about, you know, our fan base being able to take part in this. Um, 31, 32,000 alumni, WVU alumni are in the greater Charlotte area. I mean, I've been down there a bunch. Uh, I've developed a lot of friendships down there. Um, have met a ton of West Virginia people. It's it's big. This is a big weekend for West Virginia University and West Virginia in general in Charlotte. Um, so the the interest will continue to grow, and and I just think we're getting started there. From there, for, for Tennessee, is it tougher for offensive adjustments or defensive adjustments for you guys? I, I, I think it's the same based on our continuity. You know, we're, we, we've been together for five years on defense now. Um, you know, it's year two with, with, with Jake, but there, obviously it goes back farther than that, <laughs> you know. Uh, but, you know, the old line is in a better place because it's year two with Wick. Um, but from a coaching staff perspective, I mean, 
you know, myself and Jake and and Wick and you know Gerberry's been around here for what three years now, and and uh, Carrier obviously that goes back a long ways. So the continuity there is is pretty good. Um, so I don't I don't I don't think it's really based on the situation. I don't think it's one more than the other. With um, they're unknowns you mentioned, but you rattle off a bunch of stuff on your side that you're interested in seeing or kind of believe it when you see it. Are there certain things that you're especially certain positions, certain people that you'd like to see what happens when the actual game starts versus what you think may happen? <coughs> Yeah, I could. I, I mean, I. Yeah, I, I'm anxious to see it with Will. If I'm anxious to see it with him, I'm probably anxious to see it with everybody. Uh, but there, there's things that even veteran guys, uh, you know, whether it's individual performance or how how they coach on the sidelines or the feedback we're getting from them in the box or you know what the the new schemes actually look like. Uh, or you know the, the 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 camaraderie and gelling of the specific units. I mean, I'm anxious to see all of it, um, and I can't say it's really more, uh, you know, in, in one phase or one player than any of the other ones. There's just there's, you know, I'm I'm anxious to see all of it. Andy, you must, uh, you know, you obviously see parallels between your career and his as the, as the way you came up through the ranks and the likes. Uh, it's kind of two parts. Uh, first of all, the head coaching experience you have gives you what kind of advantage having the years making the decisions and doing the sideline. And the second thing, does it change anything in the pros other than uh, the fact that you grew up as an offensive guy and he grew up as a defensive guy going through football? <clears throat> yeah, I don't, I don't really, I don't think that you know what side you're on. I don't think that really matters. Um, there's nothing. There's nothing more valuable than on-the-job training when it comes to head coaches. I mean, that I believe in that. You know, I think Jeremy's a fantastic football coach, and I'm only going to comment on my experiences. There's things that I learned from that first game. There's <clears throat> there's things that I learned from last year's first game, uh, being in a little bit different role. You know, so um, I don't know that that young kid in Oklahoma adjusted pretty quickly. It, it, it matters quite a bit, you know. But you know that that's neither here nor there. But uh, you know, I, I'm anxious for this game one. I think I'm, I'm anxious to see if I've improved, and with as far as and not just like like in game decisions, but just like the whole. You know, managing the game and 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 sideline presence and um, you know adjusting to new rules. I mean, I'm I'm anxious to evaluate me. You know, so but I I do believe that there is no there's there's no greater um, there's no greater lesson learned than just on on the job training. Different game next week, right? You like it that way, where it's a few down here. I don't view it that way. Um, nice, like in the tune-up or understand. I right. don't believe in that. I mean, I don't believe in tune-ups. I mean, hell, we play eleven Power Five schools. Better not believe in taking any games off. But I, I just I, we don't approach it that way. It's just you know, it, it's it's you just can't because if 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 you do anything differently, <coughs> then then players and coaches are gonna they're gonna recognize that, and if you send any message like that, then that's how you get your butt beat. I don't care who you play. Uh, Josh Sills from wide eye last year, rotating in against Vitek to being a go-to guy at left guard this year. Yeah, if you're counting on anybody at that young, then they got a chance to be a decent player. You know, Colton was that guy. Yadney was that guy. Uh, Josh was that guy last year. You know, so you know, Colton was much better year two. Yadney was was much better. Um, so we're expecting Josh to be better as well. You know, fre fre I don't, redshirt freshman O linemen are, are. It's just rare that they play 
Um, and he's he was big enough and physical enough to be able to do that last year. The mentality aspect of it is what he struggled with all year. Um, I, th I, I think he's past that. I hope he's past that. So like mentality of seeing things or mentality of everything. I mean, just I mean everything. Just the game of football. You know. I mean, just from uh, holding up physically to preparation to understanding the calls the uh, to you know the the mental aspect of it in game. Um, you know, handling handling combat. I mean, just just the list goes on and on and. When you're a year older, it's just a, it's just a lot easier. And you have several JUCOs that are going to be playing in their first game at this level. Are, are they as wide-eyed as a as a freshman, or are they are they a veteran? How do you view their? <coughs> yeah, it, it, I don't. It, it could be all of the above. You know, it, it's I think it's like thirty percent of our seventy-two travel kids that will be taken that have not traveled. You know, that's why my game was important last week and we showed them how it's going to be. <laughs> you know, the mock game was was just like it is. I mean, it's a fake game, but but you, they saw how things flowed. So that should give them a little bit of comfort as far as how things are going to be. But it, there's you can't it's it, it, there's like again, there's 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 nothing like on on the job training. So. You know, I, 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 with the JUCO kids, they're a little bit older, uh, have played in some bigger games, but nothing like this. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll keep our eye on all those young guys and see how they're handling things. I know you're reluctant about talking about guys who haven't played yet. TJ Simmons, another good camp, I guess. Yeah, he's he's in the rotation. Um, <clears throat> we'll, we'll obviously we'll play. I mean, he's he's played in these games. You know, he, he did that as a true freshman for Alabama. So I I, it, it, I would I would I would expect him to handle this very easily and, and play a lot of snaps for us. Um, he does. He'll he'll be he'll be on a couple of them. He'll be on punt return and <clears throat> and kickoff return. Um, you know, if you're a starter, you're probably going to be on one. If it, 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 rare occasion two, rare occasion two. Uh, but if you're a if you're a pretty quality backup, then you should expect to be on two to four of them. And he's done a good job of that. He's physical. He brings some uh, uh, some physicality to that receiving core, which is what I need. Which what I feel like they need. <clears throat> so. He can maybe match what Ron gave you last year. Yeah, I would, so. I would think so. I would I would think so. Yeah. Um, you know, Marcus Sims has had a really good camp. You know, so. Uh, you know, we'll we'll move David around a little bit like we always have. I mean, he can handle all that. Um, you know, it, it, I'm anxious to watch TJ. I know what Marcus can do. You know, I'm anxious to watch TJ, and that kind of will dictate where we're going with David at times as well. Uh, you brought a lot of transfers in here from different types of schools. I mean, is there a difference? Well, what is the difference between kids you might get from Alabama, uh, you know, Clemson? Uh, UCLA prime programs as compared to some kids that transfer in who aren't uh, big time. <coughs> uh, we've turned down plenty of kids that have played at those programs, the high profile programs, I guess is how you're, what you're saying with them. I, I, my biggest thing is, is, is figure out why they want to transfer and if you have a need for that. But we have, we've had success with it. And, you know, Giovanni Haskins coming from Miami is going to see playing time. Um, you know, Jack Allison's our backup. You know, hopefully he either does or doesn't see playing time. Um, he obviously will coming in from Florida. Uh, Kenny, USC, Jabril, Clemson, who am I missing? <laughs> that, those are all good programs. You know, they were highly recruited guys out of, out of high school. And, and there, there's been a lot of others that we haven't taken because we didn't like their reasoning for transferring. So I was comfortable with each of those guys on their reasoning for transferring, and that's why we took them. And I think that's why they're all. Uh, I think that's why they're all in position to be able to help us and have success. I think you referred to it as the. the, 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 the I think, think Tony really put those words in my mouth. 
I blame that. I, I, I heard I, somebody told me that the Tennessee people are mad at me because I said that, but uh, I, I put that on Tony. I, I mean, it, it, they could have put aura on every single one of them, and it wouldn't have changed my outlook on looking at that depth chart. I mean, that's what, isn't that what I've said to you all basically from the first day I got here? You can have this depth chart if you want to, but you might as well just assume there's an aura everywhere because that's a constant work in progress. So that 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 didn't that 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 was not unexpected whatsoever, and it it didn't it didn't make me look at that depth chart any different. Has it, ever it affects affected? nothing. It absolutely, it absolutely affects nothing. Who's starting a running back for you? Yeah, I don't know yet. We got a week of practice. Honestly, I mean that's you know a couple of the oars that I put on there were really honestly in fairness to our players that are actually competing for those jobs. And if I'm Coach Pruitt, I'm probably answering that and believing the same thing. They probably got a lot of position battles going on that they're still trying to figure out who's starting. That bothers y'all way more than it bothers us. <laughs>